going to put you on the spot. If you look at from the governors um, that have um, as, um, governed the state right from the military era down pre to the present moment, how, who would you actually say that has done? Because I hear you talk about the problem of either the problem of leadership or leadership problem. Who would you actually say in all of them that has actually done well for the state? Because anytime you talk about Nigeria, you, ha you have people who will point fingers to some persons who have done well in terms of how they've moved Nigeria forward. So for on those states, in all of the governors that they've had, which of them has been the best that's ac actually done well for um, the state and that the current governor should um, take over and, and at least look at some of the steps that he took at mm -hmm. the time? And thank you. Um, like you rightly said, this problem that we have, not only in Ondo State, in Nigeria at large, it has to do with the lack of uh, a, a, a good leaders who have first sight who really have the interest of their people at heart. And I believe that even all these our leaders, they actually know the right thing to do. And I want to talk about the best governors that we've had, probably since 1976 till date. I think that question is actually, the uh, answer to that is, is, is relative in the sense that if, uh, some, if you ask some people, they can tell you that, oh, Mimiko is the best thing that has ever happened to Ondo to State. But some will tell you that, no, there's not even Mimiko that uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a governor. I'm telling you, who was the governor between 1995 and uh, 1997 when it was, the, it, was, it was a military administrator, but he successfully built a lot of uh, constructed a lot of roads, he introduced a lot of uh, developmental policies and it's not you know military administration it's not even from Mondo on those states. Let's begin this conversation taking our quote from Sun Tzu once said the art of war is of vital importance to the state it is a matter of life and death a road either to safety or to ruin hence it is a subject of inquiry which can on no account be neglected all right there from there we take our next quote and this one is from benito mussolini who once said fascism should more appropriately be called corporatism because it is a measure of state and corporate power. All right, now let's see how this quote relates to what we'll be discussing today. Very warm greetings and welcome to The Conversation, reaching you from Kaftan's television studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. I am Annabelle Ojin. On the state of Nigeria, the Sunshine State, which is officially um, the state, the capital is in Akure. It is created in February 1976. As one of the 36 states of the Federation of Nigeria, Ondo State is made up of 18 local government areas and is located in the southwestern zone of Nigeria. The state lies between longitudes of 430 and 6 um, east of the Greenwich Meridian and 545 and 815 north of the Equator. This means that the state lies entirely in the tropics. It is bounded in the north by Ekiti and Kogi state, in the east by Edo state, in the west by Oyo, Oshu and Ogun state, and in the south by the Bright of Benin, all from the Atlantic Ocean. Now let's talk about the profile of the Ondo people. Ondo state, which is indeed a microsm of the Nigerian nation, is blessed with resourceful, industrious and hospitable people, namely Akoko, Akure, Akwe, um, Idare, Ijo, Ikale, Ilaje, Ondo, and Owo. This crop of educated uh, elites has led to its being classified as one of the most educationally advanced states in Nigeria. The people are mostly subsistent farmers, fishermen, and um, traders. The life pattern of the people represent an embodiment of culture, ranging from the local foodstuff to the mode of dressing, dancing and woodcraft such as caved house posts and decorated doors the culture of ondo state people speaks volume antiquities and uh, artifacts that are also preserved in palaces of traditional rulers some of which have been declared as national monument we'll go to the language of the ondo people which is yoruba ijo and english that's the official language and several other dialects of the subgroups to their festivals ogun Olokun Igogo, Egungu, 
ajagbo orosun arugiva both regatta and mare that's some of their festivals down to their vegetation the state enjoys generally um luxuriant um vegetation a high forest zone or rainforest is found in the south where I while in the northern fringes are mostly sub savanna forests to their climate condition in case you may be asking the climate is tropical with two distinct seasons viz the rainy season that's in april to august uh, october and then the dry season which you find in november to march to their national resources i'm sure you're asking extensive fertile soils suitable for agriculture with sub savanna forests suitable for cattle grazing in the northern fringes Fast forest resources, variety of timber spices such as teak, um, malina, and masonia. That's just to mention a few. Ondo State is the largest producer of cocoa in Nigeria. I'm not saying one, we're well, saying they're only, I'm just saying that they're one of the largest, though. All right, now to other cash crops, that's what they have and is grown in the state. They also include rubber, cashew, kola nut, and palm oil. Let's talk about the mineral resources of the Ondo people. The Ondo state produces over 12% of Nigeria's total output of oil and gas. Other mineral resources found in the state are coarse sand, clay, granite, um, limestone, talc, um, kaolin, coal, columbite, rock, tin, bitumen, and a host of others. They're the second largest deposit in the world. Many rivers ocean front and the longest coastline in nigeria can you beat that we go straight to the tourism site where you have idore hill at idore uh, mountain climbing and cultural festivals that hold every december in idore they also have the ebomi lake at ipesi in akoko southeast local government area they also have um the sweet first um creeks and canals the igbo um, Igbo Olodumare at the Okego. Now, I'm sure in that regard, you're asking about the Ondo state governors, the former governors and the um, recent governor. Now, some of the former governors that you'll find in um, Ondo state, including the recent one, are namely Ita David Ikpeme, Sunday Toyo, Michael Adekunle Adjashin, Michael Bamidele Otiko, Michael Okia Akide, Ekundayo Okpaleye. Raji Rasaki. They also had um, Bode George and Sunday Biodu Olukoya. Bamidele Olumilwa. They also had Mike Tore, Ahmed Usman, Anthony Onyagram, Moses Fasoya, Adebayo Adefarati, Olushegu Agagu. Also, they had Olushegu Mimiko. They also had Oluwarotimi Oduayo Akere Dolu. And currently, is lucky are you that you are okay now the reason why i had to go all out is because some people don't even know where ondo state is someone actually asked me is ondo state in Uguausa? that is in the north no ondo state is not in the north and that's the reason why i had to explain and make that introduction now that said my guest on the show today is steven adewale who is um a historian and he is also the former sdp chairman in ondo state we'll be talking about the ondo state people and ondo state polity or ondo state politics welcome to this conversation and i'm going to be your host for today Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is the conversation reaching you from Kafans Televisions to the head the nation's capital, Abuja. Now, for the benefit of those who do not know where Ondo State is, you already missed the part. Um, that's the introduction where we introduced Ondo State and some of the governors that they had. But then we'll still talk about Ondo State before we go straight to Ondo State polity today. And my guest is Stephen Adewale, who is a historian and he is also the former SDP chairman as, um, in Ondo State. It's great to have you on the show uh, today. Thank you for having me once again. Anna. Great, I'm great. Glad to, be here. glad to have you. All right, now let's go straight. To, before we start talking about Ondo politics, let's first of all talk about Ondo State. And the reason why I want us to first of all um talk about on the state is the fact that i like i explained earlier when we started the show um when i traveled to the east i was in the eastern part of the country when i heard the um shocking news about the death of the former governor of on those state that um, Akir, governor Akiri Dolu, god bless his soul and when i was trying to tell people around sitting around me at the time 
that oh um the governor of undo state is dead the next thing the person said is where is undo state is it in the north I said, oh, so there are people that do not even know, know some of these um, places. So now we've been able to understand a little bit about Ondo State. So um, from you, what can you actually tell us about on the Ondo people, their culture, their food, their um, tradition? And we understand the fact that they say if you're looking for um, people who are intellectuals, check Ekiti and then check on those states. How true is that? Is it a myth or mm, true? Uh, thank you very much. Uh, first, it's not surprising that uh, many people don't know where on those states is. Mm. And I don't think it's even peculiar to on those states. You know, I think it generally it has to do with the, with the kind of culture that we've come to build over time, to, to build over time in Nigeria. Um, we live in a country where... Um, People don't, we, we don't place emphasis on the teaching of history, mm. on the teaching of even civic education. If you go to secondary school, for example, now civic education has been reintroduced for years into mm. the system. But you discover that what they're actually teaching is not what, they, what, they, what the students actually need in the real sense of the word. Because you can ask, you can, you can select uh, 10 uh, uh, randomly select 10 secondary school students and you ask them uh, questions that actually has to do with the country, many of them don't even know it. Even mm -hmm. uh, government students, many of them don't even know the nitty gritty of what the subject is all about. So um, I think uh, that's a challenge. It shows that we have to go back into our head. We have to take a second look at our curriculum. We have to take a second look at the, educa the kind of educational system that we've been practicing over time, especially the ones that our government has been implemented, which has been watered down from what it used to be in the mm. time past. If you ask people today to read um, to read uh, state and capital from Abia or the way to Zafra, I realize that many of them don't even know a lot of people if, if over one majority of Nigerians. Even our politicians cannot sit down and tell you that this uh, the, that this, that, that, that this is the specific capital mm. of Kebi of uh, Unless they have to buy with uh, uh, um, the Lagos, Ikeja, exactly. Ugo. Exactly. If not, so we have so we really have that problem. So we really have to go back um, to the root. So uh, now let's now talk about um, Ondo State. Um, Ondo State is a very, it's one, it's all the states in Nigeria, uh, all the states are important. Every state is important. But in case of Ondo State, Ondo State happens to be one of the, one of the, we can say like the second generation of states that were created by the federal military government. Remember the first state was created, uh, the first state were created in 1966 in order to deter uh, General Ojuku at that time from declaring, uh, from declaring uh, uh, the uh, Biafra Republic. Mm. But by 1976, the, the military administration at the time discovered that the number of states that were there that for us to be able to have a, a decentralized system of government that would really get to that will, that will be able to help people at the grassroots that there's a need for them to, there was a need at that time to create more state and at that time if you look at the unlike what was done in 1996 or what was done even in 1991 by general Ibra, by general Ibrahim Babangida, what was done at that time they actually followed the due process they make sure that they look at the sustainability and uh, the, uh, the potential of each of those uh, of those states and that's why you see at that time that on oh, those states as we have it today was not what we, it's not what we have at that time at that time the kind of on those states we had at that time ekiti was part of the was part of Ondo State. So when it was created in 1976, we never no, no one ever believed that a time like this will come when we start looking at the resources, the depth of resources. So because at that time actually everything where they're talking about human resources, you just mentioned the fact that a lot of intellectuals were there. They said oh, uh, in Ekiti, for example, that how can you go to uh, can can you uh, go to uh, visit mm -hmm. two three houses that you will not meet one uh, you not see one professor. Mm. So it's like that, and at that time. Ikiti was part of uh, Ondo State. So it continued like that. And also, it, uh, it's also a state that has a lot of potential. Though, unfortunately, now some of those potentials, like I said, some of those things had actually been, uh, had, had actually been uh, be destroyed over time. For example, we had landmass. We had a landmass of 15,500 square kilometers. And it's actually very important because among all the states in Nigeria, it's one of the states that had the largest forest reserve. Okay. In, in, in Nigeria, okay. we had a five five hundred sixty at least five hundred ninety one square kilometer of those 
of this uh, landmass was forest. And mm -hmm. Over between 1976 and 1987, where the state actually did a lot in terms of producing timbers, import, uh, exportation of uh, of agricultural products. Uh, so we generated the state generated a lot of money, a lot of uh, 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 revenue for Nigeria. So it's actually very, like I said, the, all the states are important, but when you want to talk of the revenue, especially the, the states that have contributed massively to the development of Nigeria. Because when, if you, even before 1976, if you go back in time to the declaration of uh, introduction of uh, free education by the then Western Western uh, Region Government, led by late Obafemi Awolowo, you discover that the money, the revenue that was being generated at that time, it was, it was virtually uh, the, everything was coming through agriculture and on those states played major role at the time because in terms of production of cocoa, cocoa on those states was the largest producer of cocoa at that time then also if you want to even talk of timber on those states was also the largest uh, uh, producer of timber though over time those timbers as they were harvesting them with the fail to 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 plant uh, new crops so now okay. we are at this level so i don't maybe in the course of our discussion we want to talk about the challenges of the state like a kidnapping and all that, how they now uh, uh, use and uh, exploit the advantage that the government had neglected itself to perpetrate all these atrocities that we are going to look at that. But uh, the, the long and short of the story is that on those states is actually very important when you look at the uh, how it has successfully generate income uh, to the to the to the okay. to the person okay so I, I hear you say that um, Ondo state has been able to generate so much revenue um through cocoa and through timber and all uh, but then and then you said at the time is is that is this still the same now because anytime you um you see them referring or calling out some um, states that are always generating revenue you always hear you're quick to hear of lagos you're quick to hear of rivers you're quick to hear of Kano. but then not all the time do you hear of ondo states you only hear of the oil producing states and then other states why is that so now like i said it's not actually peculiar to nigeria we cannot and presently we own those states is no longer you can't even count on those states if you want to allow your fingers to count the number of states that are actually doing well in terms of uh, income uh, generation when it comes to uh, uh, exportation on those states is not even among on those states can be among because uh, those states is one of the oil producing uh, states but when we want to talk of the agriculture mm. which was actually the life which had been the livelihood of uh, the people of the state for a very long time so it, it on those states is now a shadow of its former self in that um, in that area so is, um, it a, is it a problem of leadership um, it's not only a problem of leadership in Ondo State. I think it's a problem of uh, it's, it's the problem of leadership that we have that we've had in the country over time. Now the economy that we had before the independence was an agrarian economy. You know that economy was given it was well, it was handed over to us by the colonial power. And at that time when they came. What they were actually expecting from us was for us to be producing and for them to be taking that product to their country because those were the things that they needed at that time. That's why the cocoa, for example, is not even it's not it was not our product. It was they were the ones who brought the seed that they were the ones who introduced our forefathers into the plant uh, in, into that uh, into that system. Then a lot of other crops were also brought by them. Now by 1953, all oh, those states, like I said, happened to be the largest producer of at that time. Nigeria was the largest producer of cocoa mm. in the in the world yet and uh, on those states happened to be the largest producer of cocoa in nigeria on those was not the only uh, cocoa produce where uh, cocoa, uh, cocoa producing the uh, states at that time but on those state was actually one of the happened to be one of the largest and at that time on those was still part of the old western region which was or your state or, or which was known as or your state mm. at the time so now over time attention shifted and not in a uh, state, not in a uh, way anyway, attention of the federal government shifted. Because the system we have been practicing over time is a system whereby it, whatever decision is taken as the at the center, it affects it, it affects the state. Mm. Now attention shifted from the agriculture from the production of uh, farm uh, farm produce to to oil. And immediately that attention shifted, the people started moving to, to the area where those product, where the, where the new product mm. is, uh, is like mm. uh, uh, River State, for example. So people started moving there. So Lagos was able to survive because over time, even before independence, Lagos has been the commercial nerve of the country. 
So people are not that. So when you come, when you talk of the uh, uh, port, sea port, and all that, if anything is coming, we have to arrive uh, Lagos first. And there, there was a time that even in the day we had what we call like Babu. There was there used to be a seaport there that was during during the colonial era, but now the Ababu is not even the, the, the shadow of its uh, oh, wow. of its former self. Mm -hmm. So now everything we add now is in those states. Even in those states, we just like the fact that we have the sea, we don't even have the seaport. So everything is in whatever whatever is coming in today into the country, it will have to arrive Lagos before they will start moving them to other parts of the of the country. So that's why Lagos is what it is today. It's not just about the production of oil. It's not talk of production of oil, you look at Delta State, you look at uh, River State, you even look at Bayelsa State. Mm -hmm. So those are the, so those, now the attention of the country has shifted and that's why people keep saying that let's go back to farm, let's go back to farm, but the way we, the, that is, is uh, it has remained at the realm of slogan. We have not been able to put it back into we have not really been able to put it back into practice, practice. because if we actually want to put it into practice, we have to sit down and study how and study how it's how what the what our what the earlier leaders did that made that system to uh, to to, uh, to to succeed. So, but we have not been able to do that. How the western region at that time, for example, even the eastern region in terms of production of uh, of, uh, of of palm oil. So, what were the things that they did right that this our government could actually borrow a leaf or the other from? But we have not been able to do that. So, and it's not until we are able to put that back into practice that's when we can start talking about the sustainability of uh, financial sustainability of a state like oh. Ondo State, of a state like even Katsina. Do you know that today there was a time that Katsina, for example, was even doing well than a lot of countries in Europe because even today we have what we call Katsina leather. Mm. That yeah. Katsina leather had more quality, more quality than even uh, Italian, Italian, is in the, Italian leather. Mm. So, it was there and that's and that part and in that part of the country people survived over time and even people in Katsina were, were even even were, were even funding uh, a lot of um, a lot of internal crisis and development even as far back uh, as far as the uh, Nigerian Republic and Chad Republic at the time but now go to Katsina today nobody is even talking about uh, that leather again. nobody even really, a lot of people do not even don't remember that Katsina used to produce mm. a leather so it's not really like I said it's not peculiar to in those states. If if you look at if you go to each state in nigeria you and trace the history of that state you realize that all the, all, all the cities like all the communities in nigeria they had one thing or the other that they were doing well in the during the uh, the during the pre-colonial era but now after the colonial era, especially when our when our leaders attentions had, had shifted from all those things to the production of oil uh you realize that all those things nobody is talking even people right. who come from that community don't even remember that they used to produce uh, those things oh wow well, all right now i'm going to ask you before we move straight to the politics i'm going to ask you two questions i'd like you to take them together now, the first is with regards, you talked about agriculture, which is the mainstay of the Undo people. Now, if we have to look into agriculture, we've always had this um, complaint that we only produce what we consume. We don't, we don't produce what we can export so that we can at least have enough revenue. So if we have to go into ag agriculture and then bring it back as the state's mainstay, now we are not looking at the subsistence farming anymore. We are looking at food production, crop production, high level production, mechanized production. Now, if we have to bring that in, how far do you think that um, the Ondo people will be able to survive that, um, move away from that subsistence farming, like I said, and then move into the um, tech, agri tech? And then move to where we now can now start uh, exporting. Do you think that those local farmers are they ready to move? as the pace is going with regards to agriculture. That's one on the side. And then secondly, I'm going to put you on the spot. If you look at from the governors um, that have um, as, um, governed the state right from the military era down pre to the present moment, how, who would you actually say that has done? Because I hear you talk about the problem of either the problem of leadership or leadership problem. Who would you actually say in all of them that has actually done well for the state because anytime you talk about nigeria you ha you have people who will point fingers to some persons who have done well in terms of how they've moved nigeria forward so for on those states in all of the governors that they've had which of them has been the best that has ac actually done well for um the state and that the current governor should um take over and, and at least look at some of the steps that he took at mm. the time thank you and um, like you rightly said this problem that we have not only in those states, in Nigeria at large, it has to do with the lack of uh, a, a, a good leaders 
who have foresight, who really have the interest of their people at heart. And I believe that even all these our leaders, they actually know the right thing to do. Because if you are if you listen to many of them, especially those from uh, APC's, uh, uh, APC's uh, uh, All Progressive uh, Congress uh, Party, if you listen to them before the election, many of them realize that they actually know the problem. They know what the problem is. They know what the solution should be. Unfortunately, when many of them go, uh, get to power, they do different thing entirely. Mm -hmm. I was, I remember I was, a, I was an undergraduate student when, uh, when a, a former senator in Oshun, uh, Baba Gide came to our campus and he spoke brilliantly about what should be done to revive uh, uh, um, economy in uh, economy that's a uh, 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 farm uh, economy in uh, agricultural economy in the southwest and he cited a series of examples of the United States of America that if you are moving from Miami all the way to another city and it's so that even the distance from uh, from between that Miami and that city was even uh, was not uh, was even longer than uh, the distance between uh, Oshun to Abuja. That Okay. Yet, if you are traveling by a road, that all you are going to be seen from the right and the left is you are just going to be seen uh, uh, different uh, farms and all that. Mm. But that's in Nigeria that we don't have that. We even have a better, uh, a better, uh, um, uh, a productive uh, 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 land than than them. So he told us when they get it, that's what they were going to do. Now, years after. I was privileged to meet the same man here in Abuja. I discovered that all those things that they said they were going to do, when they got to power, when Alec Bashala eventually won and they got to power, none of them never did any of that. So what the man basically just told was that, ah, that our people was, were looking for things that they would just, that they would just eat in the immediate. So uh, that all these things, it would, take, it, it would take a longer time for them to plan it. So it shows that our leaders actually know. But what we have in Nigeria is that we lack continuity in the system. If you go back from 1999 and you, and you, and you start uh, 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 looking at each of the policies that had been introduced right from the time of Obasanjo, and now come back and now compare and now look at the system, the ones that are still surviving today, you realize that there are a lot of systems that have been abandoned over there are a lot of policies rather that have been abandoned over time so now the problem we have has to do with the leadership we, and like i said if we keep saying that people should go back it's not just about going to farm we need to make sure that we make uh, we, we, we make the environment conducive for them if the environment is not conducive then definitely yeah, it's all this is are going to be exercising uh, in futility for example let's talk about how to revive agriculture you are not going to revive agriculture when we don't even have uh, when when we continue to witness this uh, erratic um, power supply, we are not going to have a good productive agricultural system when you don't even have good road. You know the first thing that the colonial power did. That's why if you go back and study the old roads that were created by the that were built by the by the colonial powers, you know that the first thing they did that they started was for them to start to uh, to start uh, for that uh, for them to start a massive. Uh, construction of roads and all those roads you see where they lead to from the for example if they want to build road from all the way from the east they make sure that the road leads directly to the port and they make sure that the road gets to each part of the interiors where it will be easy for them to move those uh, uh, those uh, those products mm -hmm. out then the same thing was what the, the the first set of leaders also did then also if you are now going to encourage uh, people to go into this then you now need to plan on how you are going to even uh, even encourage them. For example, you have to make sure that there is la land, land is affordable. That if you give them the land, you're also going to make all the now you mentioned mechanized uh, agricultural system. That's what we have now. If you go to Malaysia, Indonesia, that's what they do. Mm -hmm. So now you need to make all those materials, all those facilities available for them. It's not just about uh, dishing out uh, uh, fertilizers and government fields that they've done enough. So you need to do that. Then aside from that, you, are, you now need to realize that by the time they are doing that, we need to make sure that that in terms of storage, that we give them, that mm -hmm. we provide, and we make a good storage. Uh, Let's talk about plantain, for example. We know that on right plantain, for example, it it it, it makes it so it, it it can it has the to even uh, uh, generate a lot of income for the country. Mm. But the problem is that if, for example, if in is in a place like a in some remote part of Ondo State, maybe in Akoko part, for example, if you produce this plantain, by the time you harvest the plantain, you have to make sure that the plantain gets to the to its destination at that same state. Mm. So how do you how do you 
how, how, how do we assure that? So people don't have that ability. It's only government that can actually do that to make sure that they make life easier for people. Then at the end of the day, it would still be a win win because whatever they do, what after the after the address and after all the efforts have been sold, the government will make some money from it. Then the government will get its own share from it. It's going to be probably 40 to 60 in but terms then, of. But then are the people are ready for this change? Or a lot of us to this change? A lot of people are ready. Now, uh, it's because we do we feel people are not ready because we've not even come to people with this kind of opportunity we've not really present these opportunities before them for you to know people are ready there are government let's talk about all day for example there was a time in all these states that the former governor Michel Dominico went to a place and carved out a place at the at Ofosu forest reserve in a, in a, a, a land of about 56 uh, square kilo I mean 51 square kilometers now they, they, they started a massive uh, a, a family that they brought in a lot of uh, a lot of uh, uh, graduates into that place but at that time we were telling the government that yes it was actually a very good initiative but this thing is not even sustainable it's not sustainable in the sense that you are bringing in these people but you are it's more like you are not even monitoring what they do and you're only telling them that okay we'll give you this certain amount of money at the end of the at the end of the month then whatever they do there the number for them to go there there is no good road that there is no good road till now there's still no good road mm. for them to get there then also even the the Mechanized uh, system that the government said they would be the only introduced, so they only move about two uh, pay leader and uh, one uh, one uh, good days are there. So now, even if, for example, if you as a graduate, if you have a, if you have your own portion of land, you may have to wait till probably even uh, six months or eight months before it will get to your turn. So oh, and wow. you know we are talking of uh, agricultural products that are produced that. It's, it's seasonal. Mm. So if you start, everybody has to start at the same time. So these are the problem. We kept, sh kept shouting at that time that it's a good initiative, but it was not sustainable. That's why you see that the subsequent government could not sustain the same thing. Now, look, go to the Ofosu forestry side. Now, it's part of the places where all these kidnappers are using as their as hideouts. As their hideout. So these are the problems that we have. Our government needs to be sincere. So we keep saying it's not just about talking. If, people, if government, if we have people who are ready to work, it doesn't take one year to actually turn all these things around. Look at what they are doing at the Ministry of Interior, for example. Mm. Who could have believed that in a matter of months that all those problems at the Ministry of Interior would be that with our passport issue, a passport and all that would be would be resolved? But look at what we are witnessing now. So it shows that if we are, if we actually have leaders who are ready to do the right thing, who are ready to turn the table around positively on the side of the people, then we are then we are good. That's the only time that we can say, okay, we are going to have the old good time again but as it stands today i don't see that leader leadership coming from anywhere not even the present uh, governor oh, because wow. after all the same governor was the one who presented the the budget the 2024 budget when he was the acting governor and if you look at the way the the, the manner at which the the, uh, the the budget was presented there was nothing to show that enough research was even done because there were a lot of crises uh, going on at that time before he went ahead and presented and in the space of one week the house of assembly approved the the budget so we need to get to that level where we see the side that our leaders are actually ready to do things uh, differently but from what we have been witnessed since 1999 there is still the same practice that is still being sustained by this uh, present uh, Aida Tiwas administration. Now, uh, we now want to talk about the best governors that we've had probably since 1976 till date. I think that question is actually, uh, an answer to that is, is, is relative in the sense that if, uh, some, if you ask some people, they can tell you that, oh, Miko is the best thing that has ever happened to Undo to Undo State. But some will tell you that, no, there's not even Miko that uh, it's, uh, it's uh, a governor. I'm telling you, who was the governor between 1995 and uh, 1997 when he it was, it was, it was a military administrator, but he successfully built a lot of uh, constructed a lot of roads, he introduced a lot of uh, developmental policies and it's not you know military it's not even from Ondo on those state. But it's relative in the sense that if you want uh, we have not really been able to witness our government at its best. The way that I mean the way people ought to run the, the, the government. If you have the way that, if you have this system that this how to run the government and you, and you are rest assured that they are actually following it, then you can be, it will be easy for you to now justify the, uh, to, 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 uh, to compare two administrations. But during the military government, we don't even know the budget. 
that is coming. So we don't know whether the if they do a particular government is only implementing, it's only spending one percent, while ninety nine percent is going uh, was going elsewhere. Now during the military uh, um, uh, admin, uh, the civilian okay. administration since 1999. I think the best we can say we have so far during the civilian administration is under the or the administration of Olusha Nimiko, and it was even short-lived. It was just during the first time. The second time of Nimiko, Nimiko did not do anything at all. It's more or less like that first uh, first time. He just wanted to use that because at that time he had a lot of political enemies. Uh, Tinubu at that time was making effort to take over. Um, uh, he was and he was also not in uh, PDP. He was a labor. He was a labor party man. So he did a lot. At that time, to actually convince people that he could, he would die, that he has the ability to lead the state, and that was why people rewarded him by giving him the the second time. But unfortunately, the second time was even worse than uh, the than the uh, the administration that the times of the administration that we've already witnessed before before him. Okay. So yes, aside from him, I don't really think we have really had any other. Oh, wow. other... looks like you're not even uh, calling the um, God bless his soul, the um, recent past um, governor even at all. I cannot be lose, uh, 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 arguably, but the truth is that this is the worst that the Ondo state has ever witnessed. Oh, wow. Right from 1976. The mess that, we, that the state went through, what is the, the embarrassment we suffered? During Akiri Dolu's administration, we, the state has never saw, has never gone through that uh, that uh, that uh, political torture before. Oh. So it was it, it, it was it was very bad. In fact, the second time, the, this, the monetization, the, the the monetization of our of our of, of our voting system started with uh, was started by Akiri Dolu because that second time it was obvious that the first time was was Akiri Dolu never did anything. Uh, the election day they came with money, they bought people's conscience and. And he got the second time. So nobody in his right sense, if they're actually ready to be sincere, nobody in his right sense will tell you that Akili Dulu did anything positively because All even right. those who are supporting him, if you see them and tell them and ask them to tell you the to list five major uh, developmental policies introduced by Akiri Dolu, they will never be able to list any because all the all the developmental uh, projects introduced by his uh, his uh, his uh, predecessor, he got there. He made sure that he cancelled everything. For example, free uh, uh, free transportation for workers and for the students. It okay. was when he got there that he cancelled that. So there were a lot of other things. Like even our educational system was in shambles during his own administration. All right, because you talk, you talked about um, continuity in government, would we'll, um, start in that regard. Let's go on this quick break, and when we come back, we'll have we we'll still have um, Stephen Adewale, who is um, a historian, and he's also the former SDP chairman in Ondo State. We're still talking Ondo. State state and under state policy. Stay with us. We'll be right back. Since 1999, I think the best we can say we have so far during the civilian administration is under the or the administration of Olusha Nimiko, and it was even short-lived. It was just during the first time. The second time of Nimiko, Nimiko did not do anything at all. It's more or less like that first uh, first time. He just wanted to use that because at that time he had a lot of political enemies. Uh, Tinubu at that time was making effort to take over. Um, uh, he was and he was also not in uh, PDP. He was a labor. He was a labor party man. So he did a lot at that time to actually convince people that he could he would die that he has the ability to lead the state and that was why people rewarded him by giving him the the second time but unfortunately the second time was even worse than uh, the than the uh, the administration that the times of the administration that we've already witnessed before before him okay. so yes aside from him i don't really think we've really had any other Oh, wow. Any Looks like you're not even uh, calling the um, God bless his soul, the um, recent past um, governor, even at all. I cannot be lose, uh, 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 arguably, but the truth is that this is the worst that the Ondo state has ever witnessed. Oh, wow. Right from 1976. The mess that, we, that the state went through, what is the, the embarrassment we suffered? During Akiri Dolu's administration, we, the state has never saw, has never gone through that 
uh, that uh, that uh, political torture before. Oh. So it was it, it, it was it was very bad. In fact, the second time, the, this, the monetization, the, the the monetization of our of our of, of our voting system started with I uh, was started by Akiri Dolu because that second time it was obvious that the first time was was Akiri Dolu never did anything. Uh, the election day they came with money, they bought people's conscience, and and it got the second time. Welcome back. If you just joined us, this is The Conversation reaching you from Kafans Television Studio here in the nation's capital, Abuja. If you just joined us, you've actually missed out on the first part of the show, but then you can still join the second part as my guest on the show today is Stephen Adewale, who is a historian. He is also the SDP, former SDP chairman in uh, Undo State, and we're talking about Undo State and Undo State polity. All right, before we went on that um, break, we've actually, the last part you talked about was continuity in government. We'll talk about that one later, but then um sometime in this week we saw um most of the national dailies i'll pick it from the nation's newspaper says gmo mobilizes ondo for apc after visiting 18 local government areas senator ibrahim um begins to visit 203 wards introduces um a sayori um card and targets one million votes for 2024 and 2027 elections. And the one we're talking about that one um, during our newspaper review program, I had um, one, I think it was one of the guests, and that says, how can you be talking 2027 in 2024 when you already have problems in your state? You're not, you, you, are, you are not all mobilizing yourself to um, cater to your people or solve the insecurity you are still talking about how to capture power so is it too early or is there is there any time as too early or too late to talk about these matters especially election matters oh well the, for jima ibrahim i know that jima ibrahim is not doing what he's doing now for uh, because of 2027 is because he's interested in running for the for the office of the governor so he's doing all this. So this is part of the campaign. And we all know that uh, camp politics had already started Stop. as far back as December 2023. So he's interested in running for the office. So all the Ashigari uh, uh, project that is being initiated and introduced now. So it's part of his own campaign. Uh, it's part of his own campaign strategy. And if you look at the APC today, APC already has about 18... Uh, 18 uh, uh, contestants, those who have at least indicated interest in running for the office of the governor under the, on, under the, on, under the banner of the party. So, mm -hmm. Jim O'Brien is one of them. So, it's not about 2027. It's actually about 2024. So, but for the, the to me, I, I think every, every citizen has the right to run for the office but personally one would have expected that for a man who just emerged as the senator mm. to represent his uh, his, uh, his 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 uh, his constituency uh, his mm. constituent uh, in 2023 and that senatorial district so to say has a lot of issues that on those south senatorial district on oh, those south senatorial district happen to be a district that has not had light electricity supply for the past 10 years mm. so now if you are if you if you if you decide to to contest in that in uh, that, uh, that kind of place and you promise the people because that was one of that's one of his uh, political uh, uh, political slogan that was going to ensure that electricity was restored back to the south so one would have expected that if you actually love your people if you are fighting for the interest of people you know that there are a lot of issues in the, at this particular senatorial district so why don't you take your time dedicate time to sit down in that Abuja and fight for the interest of your people. But I can assure you now uh, it has been in those state and definitely it's not even going to have any time for for legislative uh, affairs again until maybe after the after the primary, which is not coming up anytime soon. I think the primary is coming up in uh, in, in, in April twenty twenty four. So that's that's and that that's that, that yeah, that's a sign for you to know the kind of people that are in APC, that you know, all, what all of them did, even when Akiri Dulu was sick, even in Akiri Dulu's cabinet, about four or five of them came out and said they wanted to contest, and they were even playing politics with the with the, with, with with the sickness of the governor. Mm. So it shows you the what why the state is in mess today. It shows you the that's the character it's because of the, the characteristics of the people that are leading us. So they are the people who are more interested in their personal post than 
in what in, in whatever becomes of the state in right. the, the long run. If you love your people, then fight for them. Four years is enough for you to fight for people. So don't say you are coming to Abuja and at the same time you sit down in Ondo State and you are running for another you are running for another office. All right. Now, because we, we say we're going to talk about um, um, uh, continuity, now we saw how much uh, just yesterday how the current um, governor uh, has um, collapsed a lot of structures and then he has moved on to make some appointments for the SSG, his deputy, which have actually created a lot of um, hues and cries, brows, people still keep talking on and off social media space. So what is why, why do you always have um, people who come into power and then feel like the former governor, whether you, you, you were, he was his deputy, so it means that whatever he was, um, the, the late governor was doing, you already knew about it. So, at what point did he now re realize that okay, we don't need all these structures, let's sweep them all away and then bring in new people? What are your thoughts in that regard? Mm, I think the uh, that is it's not only peculiar to Ondo State, it is the nature of our politics. I think you have to look at the appointment of the how uh, the, 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 the manner at which this appointment has been made. Even look at the present sitting governor. When he was appointed as the deputy governor, when he was chosen as the deputy governor of uh, by Akinuba as his deputy at that time, he was more he was uh, one of the least uh, uh, a least uh, uh, people, uh, politician in APC that was expected to emerge at that time. But I can't really do that because he felt, oh, this person will listen to me. Mm. Because every politician, and that's the problem we have. If t you see in the United States of America, if two people run for the run for the office, by the time a candidate emerge, the candidate will approach the other person that look, you have this idea, let's work together. But Nigeria is not like that. Our system is still whereby if you and I run for a position, I will feel like oh, Annabelle has this idea. If if she comes in, she can start. She may she may start antagonizing me. Then I will rather go and pick somebody that I know that this person is not even in terms of uh, intellect, in terms of uh, political understanding that this person is, is, is not even there. I will go and pick, and pick the person. So that so it's a yes sir, yes ma political system whereby you don't allow whoever is under you to question you. So that is why the problem we have here. Now when Ayuda Tiwa was appointed, Dami was chosen, then the commissioners were also appointed. But you remember that what we witnessed yesterday did not even start, it was, it was the, uh, the continuation of politics that had started as far back as last year. Remember that Ayuda Tiwa was also showing interest in running for the office. Even when his, his boss was alive, mm -hmm. he was he already indicated interest that he was ready to replace the 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 man then also there were a lot of other people like the ex commissioner for education uh, uh, uh for 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 finance mm -hmm. uh while they are uh there's uh uh the ex uh ex uh, uh, uh secretary to the to the state government there were a lot of them who wanted to run for office at the time so a lot of politics were ongoing even when the governor was sick the commissioners were not even listening to the to the acting governor they made sure that they conspired together to sideline the acting governor now when the man remember that there was a time that even president Inubu called them to abuja and yet at that time they what they told us was that the president ordered that status quo should remain and each time they held state executive council meeting the info the, the, the information we always got was that a lot of them will even do always uh, uh, attack the the acting governor so you cannot expect a man such a man to come to office and to and for him to be to be ready to work with those people because this is like a house that's already divided okay. and you are coming in you want to you know, you know that you have a limited time you know within the next one we really are your boss only add in less than one year before his death. So we had only one year. So if you are coming, you should be able to eat the ground running. But remember, you are now working with individuals who already have different political interests. Just last week, if you would not forget, just last week, um, the, the governor called for APC, uh, called, called, called someone the APC stakeholders meeting. Most of the commissioners, 70% of them did not attend that meeting. Mm. So it shows that they still did not see the governor as somebody that could lead them. And they did 
in that affair because they thought the politics had started that the governor summoned the stakeholders meeting for him to start campaigning. And it's obvious actually that it was because of policy because at the meeting the, uh, the news we got was that the governor started promising that each of the world that will start giving them a uh, 500 uh, thousand naira. So that's politics. It shows that the, the, now the governor is trying to build his own uh, his own political structure. structure. Mm. So now it's, so it's expected that definitely the governor will have to okay. do it with them. Okay. Sorry, sorry, I have to put in there because I hear you say that he's supposed to. Be, uh, he has a limited time, so he's supposed to hit the ground running. So when he has, um, he has chosen his new deputy. That's um, the person of um, um, uh, Olabi, yeah. and then he has chosen his um, SSG, and then he talked about paying those who have not been paid, the workers, civil servants who have not been paid, and then he has collapsed a lot of. Is that not hitting the ground running? No, that's oh, not. Yeah. Yes, that's supposed to be hitting the ground running, but hitting the ground running that. I'm talking about is that if in a, in, a, in, in a sanity clan where you have politicians that do not have any selfish interest, you know, eating the ground running will mean that it's not all we're even witnessing that because all these things that they do, there are things that they are supposed to be doing ordinarily. For example, a government is not supposed to be paying. Uh, 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 people's pension and they will be rejoicing over that. Mm. Uh, uh, people have been on strike. Uh, people of the state, taxpayers, they've been on strike for over 14 months. The late governor failed to do anything. All the commissioners that were in the cabinet that formed Kaba, they failed to do anything. So the new governor came and said, look, that we are going to pay that reason that we that will start paying your salary. So that's normal thing. That's, those are the things that the governor that governor supposed to be doing. When you are talking of eating the ground run, it means that we are talking of a government that will address the structural problem that is already affecting the state. Let's talk about education, for example. Okay. Today, the last time all those states employed a teacher was in 2004. Since 2004, Ondo State, and that's 20 years ago, mm. which means that for the past 20 years, Ondo State had not even deemed it fit to employ a single secondary school teacher. Mm. Now, you know, we have a situation whereby the situation had gotten so worse now that a lot of people who have been in the system over time, it means even, let's even assume that we employ people 20 years ago. By now, those people were already 20 years old in the system. Mm. Now, you know, the situation where in a secondary school, they may have one, one physics teacher. So uh -oh. the same thing, and you know our secondary schools, you know, we, in SS1, we have about eight or nine arms. Mm. So how do you expect those students to excel? If you have one physics teacher in a student in, 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 a, in, a, in a school, where you have about maybe eight arms, for example, in SS1, in SS2, in SS3. So, so, so should, we, should we still call on those state people the state for intellectuals? That that's, what what say, it, that's what I'm telling you, that it's a shadow of his former self. You ah. are saying that that intellectual, that intellectualism that we are talking about is no longer there in the real sense of the word. If you go, because if you look at what made us to be, the, what, what made people to, to, to revive us at the, by, in, in the past, we, we go, it's, it's because of that system. From the grassroots, from primary school, you see how they teach people. But now, if you, you can't, those things are no longer there. Mm. So now, if you have that, if a government is addressing that, that means the government is, it's, it, the, the government eats the ground running. Mm. Then, aside from that, it's so much in our education system today that all our libraries, none of the libraries in the state, in all the secondary schools, and in all this, none of them is functioning. Now, for you to know how, deterior, how, how bad the situation is or what it is in those states today, if your world is a student in a particular, let me use Fuwashaye uh, uh, Girls High School, for example, this, uh, this, this is one of the best schools, you know, this used to be one of the best schools in those states, or Aquinas College, for example, if you had a student there at SS3, they, they will tell the child that before your child can be allowed to write uh, 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 sit for a uh, wayek or neko. The child must buy must buy a dictionary and uh, and another book. For you to know how worse it is. So the whole the whole system is in is is in mess. It's in shambles. So but the, even the sitting government is not even addressing that yet. So is it, uh, it has not hit any ground running. What they are doing now is a continuation and it will continue like this because, like I said, it's a governor who already has a selfish interest. He's, in, he's interested in running for the office. He wants to come back at all costs. That's why all the appointments that, uh, all the appointments that have been made so far, they are the appointments that have, that are colored with political, that have their political coloration okay. behind it. So, I mean, so I don't really see, to me, I don't expect anything 
anything for the next one year. But you know, it's just that we are in a state where people are already frustrated. So I you know why people is frustrated. Why people are frustrated? Whatever decision you take, people will say, okay, at least it's not like this. It should be like this. Mm. It's just like in Nigeria at the, at the federal level in 2014, people were so frustrated with AP, with PDP led government at the time that they were not even interested in taking the second a critical look at why at the person of Buhari. They just wanted any even even the former president Obama said he what he wanted is anything but good like Jonathan. So which is what they want the same thing I, I, I mean, the same thing is also affecting us at the grassroots. Oh. People now what they are rejoicing about is not actually what to rejoice about because all the people that are coming they are not people who even have what it takes to even turn the turn the state around. Oh. But there are people who can support the governor to make sure that he secured the APC ticket and emerge as the as the flag bearer of APC. In one part you see people rejoicing and then saying oh thank you for coming and then in the other part is a different kettle of fish entirely the disgrace the shame the name calling and all and then i hear one of my colleagues say oh look like this man will just um, I, I pray he doesn't commit suicide and i said oh it's not, it's not that bad very soon we'll just move on and like nothing happened what would you tell us in that regard what exactly happened and why did it get so bad to that extent? Hmm, for first, you know, our politicians are shameless, so they are not going to commit suicide. <laughs> <laughs> it's obvious. So we need, we need to, like you said, it's not going to get to that level. Um, what I see there, I think first, let me say that in that in, in terms of management of information, I think the the governor started well. Okay. Because nobody actually saw it coming. Not even the members of the school, because I can assure you that there, there were a good number of them that if they had known that the cabinet was going to be dissolved a lot of them would have submitted their resignation letters especially those who were interested in running for the for the office among the cabinet members mm. so none of them saw it coming and if you saw the, uh, the 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 series of appointments made yesterday you know that the government happened to uh, uh, it, it looks like somebody that probably the, a lot of people already the, the thought by the the, the underestimated they must have underestimated him mm. in the real sense of the word and like i was telling somebody about two weeks ago that look somebody like this you can't or you should you, you can only underestimate him at your at your peril in the sense that now it's not easy we have we have been in this we have been witnessing this system system since 1999 we know that for you to for to make effort for that huge uh, kind of conspiracy that wanted to remove him not for them not to have been able to remove him from the office at that time it shows that this particular man must have had some power some powers behind him that people could not people 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 don't really see in the real sense of the word then if you now look at when he emerged what he has done look at that he, uh, he appointed immediately he dissolved the cabinet he appointed the he announced the appointment of his uh, deputy governor he he, and the deputy governor the appointment of the deputy governor for example you see up to 48 hours ago about 16 lists were being were being uh, sent around the state uh, and usually and everything was flying around the social media but the name of even the the venture the man that was eventually chosen was not there mm -hmm. so it shows that he actually knew how to manage that information very well then on that same day he appointed another uh, secretary to the state government to the person of uh, to Kana. And yet, then nobody saw it coming. Then, then on the same day, we also appointed a uh, chief of uh, of protocol. Mm. Uh, in all those three appointments, nobody actually saw it coming that these were the people that could that were, that, were, that were going to be appointed. So, it started well in that regard. Now, when you now want to talk of the what happened yesterday, it shows that people generally, they are watching. Whether we like it or not. And it's also a lesson. Before we even talk about what happened on those states, it's a lesson. What happens is it's a lesson in leadership. That whenever we find ourselves, let's try as much as possible not to let power get into our head. Because the power, in whichever way, we need to know that the, the power is joy, every, everything is transient. We are there today, we may not be there tomorrow. What, whatever increment today might become, uh, it will definitely become a former one day. Mm. We're in this country when Obama was everywhere. Even when 
Aketi was there. All the people that were singing his praises at that time, where are they today? Some of them, quietly, they are already lining up behind the, behind the sitting governor. Mm. So it shows that when we are there, let's just know that we are there to serve people and let's serve people to the best of our ability. Look at the look at the Ministry of Justice. Look at all the mess that was created by that uh, ministry. You know everything that happened in the state. The governor went on leave without adding over to the without adding over to the deputy and a lot of things and this the, the city commission and the commissioner then kept justifying everything and also aside from that even descended on the senior office senior civil servant at the ministry those that have been there for a very long time and this was a man that referred to himself as a human rights activist chastity Loye is one of the people that used to every 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 human rights uh, agitation you will see him there before anything you will see him in court fighting through the government and now he had the opportunity he was even when he was appointed a lot of people were happy in the state when late academy appointed me because they thought oh for us to have had at least a uh a uh, uh, human rights fighter as the commissioner for justice then that means the state is going to witness, witness justice mm -hmm. but in fact his regime was the worst in this of the state there's no oh i will not talk about akedebelu tomorrow that will not talk about all the constitutional crisis that happened in the state that took place now but look at what happened in now yesterday all of a sudden they woke up and realized that they were no longer the now down they were no longer in power now just oppose that with what happened at the ministry of energy and resources there was another man there uh, uh, and general Azak will be now immediately people heard the announcement that the oh, cabinet has been dissolved the the, the, the the workers came together they mobilized uh, drummers and all that they started singing his praises and answer. so it shows that people are actually watching if you are if you do the right thing people will people know it's just that it's not like people have been waiting for that opportunity that, okay they like this is coming to teach you a lesson and you know it caught them on a way something what happens they will not have happened if they had known that cabinet Net was going to be the same. Many of them would have secretly removed their files from the office <laughs> on the, the previous day, but they never knew. It's called them on away. They just woke up to the news, so they had to now go back to the to the to, to, to their offices to remove their files and to remove uh, the other other valuables. So now we're getting the people workers were already waiting for them. It's not only limited the, to the need to the justice and energy. Virtually all the commission, even many of them, they never bothered to even come to the office. A lot of them had to so the flee the state so it's so it's actually a lesson to everyone that when we are there today we should try as much as possible to know that we are we are there to serve the interest of and to serve people we don't have and when we are the fact that we're there today in the space of in a matter of time only god knows tomorrow if things change it is whatever we do today that people will continue to talk about in the coming uh, in the coming years all right let's round up this um, conversation and I'd like to ask you two questions and I'd like you to take them in one breath if you can help us in the next three minutes. Now, the first is, I hear you, you said something, unquote, the office is permanent, but the occupant's stay is just transitory. Shall we now welcome you all back home after years of ineffectual representation? I would like you to expatiate on that if you can. And then secondly, do you, what if um, the current governor, Lucky Aida, he will calls you up? to take up a particular position are you looking into any of any position hmm. at the moment okay and um, on the first thing on, on the first uh, statement i think the statement uh, like i said it's a lesson now when many of most of these people it's quite sad because personally i know a good number of them they were those who were commissioners under akiti and i know I've been, many of them have been following them before before their emergence and i know what they used to do I know how they used to fight to me that I feel these people were actually fighting for the interest of the people. Now, when they were going there, if you listen to, if you were to be there, when many of them were defending, they were presenting themselves before the status of assembly, you will be sad for what uh, what what eventually happened in the state and um, there are a lot of mess a lot of crisis which they did and it's actually years of wastefulness you cannot from between from 2018 till date you cannot come back you cannot even refer to a single ministry and say that this is the ministry that performed exceedingly well so we don't even have that and we continue to have this crisis look at even what they did the mess they created recently with the introduction of this uh, new lcds they created a uh, 33 lcds that's local council development areas now it's a good thing to, to create because you want you wanted to take government back to the people to, to the grassroots and you want to encourage uh, people at the grassroots to 
participate in politics. And that agitation has been on as far back as 2014. In fact, the first person who set up the committee, because the first thing to do is to set up a committee. The way you set up the committee, the committee will now go to the grassroots. And we now, uh, aside from that, we now uh, uh, carry out a referendum to ask the people where you want it to be, what you actually want to do with the LCDs. Then aside from that, you have to now talk of the funding of those LCDs. How are you going to, so, uh, to ensure the sustainability of those LCDs? Now, Akene Dolu eventually set, uh, uh, also called the committee back and told them to, uh, to, uh, to go ahead with their, with their fact findings. But the committee never came back. We never heard anything. All of a sudden, they just woke up and said they were setting it up. Akele Dolu was sick. All these commissioners sat down and they introduced all that. I remember one of them that was even commissioner for uh, for, uh, for, uh, for for chiefs titles and uh, local government. He was one of the people. There was uh, one of the people who always shout at the top of his voice to say that look that they are shooting that that the way we run our government is not okay. And uh, but when he himself got there, we had to remind him that look that in in, in Nigeria we had uh, there is this uh, international uh, the public sector accounting standard that governs the affairs of all the local government. We need to know the expenses of the government. You cannot go to anywhere in those state today and ask for an ally to any local government and ask them for the for the, for their budget to know how they expect uh, 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 what their expenses are they do you won't find the record. Even the funding nobody nobody knows all that. All so right. the whole thing was a mess. I mean I mean it was a mess. And it's also a lesson to the present government too. It's there today like I said and it has started with the politics and definitely with that politics is going to continue like that. If care is not taken uh, especially if at the end of the day maybe he's unable to get the ticket of the APC or at the end of the day he lost out at the general at, at the at the governorship election uh, in November. Definitely he himself is going to look back and he will regret what he is doing now. So okay. now in terms of the appointment it's not just about the appointment because when you look at the, the state generally Realize that the, the state has a lot of problems, but if we actually have leaders, who you know that there's nothing to have a leader that is actually that have a altruistic motive. But the leadership we have now is more interested in politics than development. All right. So somebody like me cannot work with 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 somebody like it's not it's not possible. So, so are we expecting to see you in the ballots? In definitely later this year or in 2027, and definitely I'm going to be uh, no, definitely for now, I'm going to be more on the side of the masses. You are going to see me more in terms of writings, in terms of uh, agitating for the good governance, and uh, because that is what we need more in the state now. It's not just about it, they have had friends who were appointed as commissioners, but when you are there, remember that you have a boss at the top. If the boss you have at the top is not ready to do the right thing, you are just sitting down there wasting your time. So the best thing is for us to sit at the side of the side of the masses. Many of these people do not have the platform for them to channel their grievances, but we have that platform. We okay. have that voice. So we are going to continue to raise that voice on their behalf for now. So no intentions to go into politics? No, no yet. intention to go. For now, because for I now. just left... I just left SDP and I know the mess that was there. So, and I'm not happy with the way we run our political system. It's a system whereby generally it even tends to lead to retrogression than, uh, than progression. Oh. So, as a result of that, I'm not ready to go back into that. So, like I said, I want to be on the side of the masses. I want to see things from the, from, from, from the lenses of the masses than to, in order to be able to correct this. And then someone, so, some will actually say, see, it's being in the side of the masses. That's like building up to someday for politics. But then since you already say you're not ready anytime soon, maybe when we begin to see like the green lights coming, we'll call yeah, you. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> Thank you so much, Stephen. Thank you so much. And former SDP chairman on the state. It's been a wonderful time. It's always a pleasure having Thank you. Thank you so much. I'm glad to be here once again. Great. Thank you. All right, viewers, that's where we end this conversation for today. We have been chatting with Stephen Adewale, who is a historian and the formal um, SDP chairman in Ondo State. I'm sure you must have been rightly educated, entertained, and informed. At least you must have been able to understand the Ondo people, their culture, and how it all started from the military era down to the civilian era, and even up until this moment, and also the um, political um, challenges that they are witnessing in Ondo State. It's been a wonderful time here on The Conversation. I will see you next time. Keep watching the conversation because you never know who my next guest will be or what I will be speaking of next. From the nation's capital, Abuja, I am Annabelle Oji. God bless you and yours. God bless Nigeria. <laughs>